Hey guys, welcome to this week's Hot or Not Thursday. We are playing with Soap and Glory Cosmetics. Now, this was unexpected to me, but I recently ran into a display at Ulta and I had been meaning to order some of their cosmetics online because I actually tried Soap and Glory Cosmetics for the first time about three, three or four years ago when I went to London and went to IMATS out there at the drugstore at Boots. They carry like everything soap and glory as far as foundation, concealer, powder, liner, and I went haywire and got a ton of stuff. But after that, I didn't really have a chance to go and buy it again, and I just never got around to ordering it and shipping it all the way from overseas. But now they are starting to carry cosmetics in Ulta, and this is super exciting because I do really enjoy the Soap & Glory brand, love their skincare products, love their body care. I've just been a really big fan for a long time. And I have tried a few of their lip items. They used to carry them at Sephora, and they were a higher price point. Like this guy, I mean, you guys have seen this in so many videos. I have put this gloss in favorites. I have talked about this gloss so many times and it is what I'm wearing right now and it is phenomenal. If you want really juicy, big lips, this is one of the best colored plumping lip glosses hands down. Um, but we will get to a little bit of everything. I tried out their foundation, a blush, a highlighter. We're gonna talk about their eyeshadow palette. So really a nice variety of everything that is newly launched over here in the States. This guy right here is called Hocus Focus and I love the name of it. You get one ounce, I believe this is $16 and I this is the first one that we're talking about right after I'm like, I love the whole Soap and Glory range. This was a little bit disappointing to me. I tried using it as a primer just to kind of illuminate my skin. I tried strobing with it, and I did try mixing this in with foundation. For me, this was just a missed product, and I prefer, of course, my Edward Best for illuminating. But as far as strobing goes, I prefer Becca liquid highlighters, Benefit liquid highlighters. This one just did not impress me, so this was actually a pass and it comes out like a lotion. You can see it has a white cast. You can see that pearlescence in here and once you blend it in it does have a nice sheen but it feels like it's a little bit too much as a base underneath your foundation and not quite enough on top of it. So for me that was my issue. Didn't really like it. Pass. Now onto the foundation, which I did pick up two shades. Now in Ulta, they don't have a huge range of colors and it's kind of interesting because Soap & Glory products are more geared toward fair skin. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. Whereas a lot of people are saying the Milani um, foundations, where are you? A lot of people are saying the issue they have with the Milani foundations is that they are geared toward deeper skin tones, and they are. So this one, Milani the Conceal and Perfect that I keep talking about that is like my favorite right now, this is shade number two, and it is darker than both of these. I have the shades Happy Medium. I also have the shade Cool Sand. Now they look darker in the actual pump, so keep that in mind. I would really encourage you to try the testers in the store at Ulta. Um, I really like this product. I think it is a great bottle. You guys know I love a good pump on a foundation, keeping everything very clean, sanitary, and I just think it protects the product and you get more out of your product with a pump versus sticking your fingers in a jar or dumping product out and wasting it. I just love that feature on a foundation. And this is a liquid to powder foundation. This is called the One Heck of a Blot. It's a 12 hour long wearing technology with super blur powder. So this is a shine blocking, great for oily skin, but I have combo skin and I was able to wear this no problem. I do feel like when I wear this, I do get a nice minimized shine element going on and it's not very dry or patchy. The only thing I wanna make clear with this foundation is I don't think it is very buildable. I think that once you have a layer on, you really just need to blend it as is and then go on top with a concealer if you have areas that you would like to conceal further rather than sometimes I will go in with the foundation everywhere and I will take another layer on top. If you do that with this one, it does bunch up and it almost kind of sits funny on the skin. But keep in mind, if you use that one layer, it's an awesome foundation. It is very affordable. The foundation is $19, so I feel like that is the middle point between really expensive high-end and drugstore. The Milani is 10 bucks. This is 20. You know, my more expensive ones are 40. So this is a good middle of the road. 
um, but it feels very luxury. Like it does give you a nice effect. It is a medium to full coverage. And again, it does really lock into place where you're not gonna get super oily throughout the day. Moving on to face products. Now in my favorite holy grail must have bronzers video, I talked about the Wonder Bronze and I am wearing this again today and I love this for so many reasons. The pinwheel effect in here is great. You can swirl all these colors together and you get this beautiful glowy bronze that really does warm up the complexion without making you look like a disco ball. Even though when you initially look in here, it looks a little terrifying. You're like, whoa, that's gonna be really shiny. Once it is on the skin, it kind of transforms and it doesn't look so super shiny. The other thing I like about this is you can go into each individual color here and you could even use this as eyeshadow if you wanted to. So I just like the design of it. I love the product. I love how it wears. I think it's really, really beautiful. And just everything, even the packaging is super, super cute. So because I loved this one so much, when I was at Ulta, I had to pick up the blush version. This is called Love at First Blush. And this is in Pink Pop and Pearl. This is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I'm wearing this right now today and I literally just did a nice little sweep, a little swoosh, and it just glows the entire apples of your cheeks up with a nice pop of pink. And it blends really beautifully. I just, I really love this. You can actually go in and just grab that lighter shade and you're gonna be able to highlight with the lighter shade that you've chosen, or you can go everywhere and get that nice pinky effect. So it's really up to you. You have some options with these and I think they're really well done, well made, just great products. This one I'm still on the fence about. I can't decide whether I love it or just kind of like it. This is a highlighter and it looks super peachy pink in the pan. Now on my finger here, you can see how really highlighty and like a creamy glow kind of a highlight it gives off. It's very pretty but I do feel like this is more of a blush topper. I have tried highlighting my cheekbones with this because I'm like, mm, it is really shiny, like maybe I can get that done. But it does leave too much pink for me to do just on the tops of the cheekbones. So this is just a blush topper, which is why, you know, yes, I think it's pretty that way, but I don't think I would reach for it a lot and I don't think I'm gonna recommend this one heavily because of that. So um, I think they have a different highlighter over in the UK that they don't sell over here that is a little more like papau. And I would love to get my hands on that one, but this one, the glow all out, just was not for me. On to what everybody wants to know about. This bad boy right here. I cannot find this on the actual Soap and Glory website itself. I think this might be exclusive to Ulta, but right now their site is down and I can't even find this on the Ulta site, but I did buy it at Ulta. So this is what the palette looks like. The brush that you get in here leaves much to be desired. Um, don't really, I just don't really like this brush, but that's fine. You know, use your other brushes you have on hand that you already enjoy. And these powders blend beautifully. They are not as pigmented as I would love as far as the matte shades. Like you can get a nice transition going easily, but I found that I did need to reach for my MAC palette. I used the shade Soft Brown when everything was said and done just to kind of blend my crease a little bit more because it wasn't giving me enough compared to the shimmer on the lid. And today I am wearing Minky all over the lid and Cream Soda. So I'm wearing these two, they're very similar, but I just put Minky all, I'm not flicking you off, I swear. I'm putting Minky all over the lid and cream soda right in the center and then on the inner corners. And it just gives off this very glowy, pretty look. I do really like this. It's a really nice color selection put together. It's just not enough. I wish Smolder was more of a rich black. I wish they had a matte cream highlight. And I wish that Nudecomer and Toasty were a little bit more pigmented. Aside from that, great shadows. Um, it's not a bad palette, but it's not like a new discovery that I'm doing backflips over. Let's talk about the backflips because there are products that I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God. This is six bucks and I would encourage you all to run out to your local Ulta and grab this. It smells, oh, it smells so good. It smells like vanilla in the best way, not in like a sickeningly sweet, like gross way in just like a very elegant, like, like you would almost wear it as perfume, but it's still really yummy. So this is beautiful. This goes on the lips, so creamy and gorgeous. Look at that color, six bucks. 
oh my goodness. It does plump your lips. It does feel very cooling. It does feel very hydrating. I love this. They have three other shades and I'm gonna pick them all up. I also picked up a new shade of the Pillow Plump XXL. I love this stuff. I always get comments whenever I wear this product about what is on my lips. I don't like wearing it alone. I actually prefer it as a topper. And today I'm wearing it over top, this Alexis Vogel Stay Pout Liquid Lip Stain, another brand I am trying out. And I'll probably do a hot or not on these in the near future. But I put the lip stain on. Oh, oh, have that been doing that this whole time? It may have used too much. <laughs> um, right. That is the one issue with this gloss. Do not get carried away. It's really easy to do, but it does do the stringy thing. Aside from that, it is so good. It actually tingles and it feels like little tingly guys are like just really just getting that circulation in your lips going. Your lips actually feel like like it does something. And the color sits on top of other lipsticks so well. My favorite is right here, which is Koi Toy. And then this is the new one called Pink Well. This is more pigmented and peachy. This came on a little bit clear. Um, they do have an actual clear, clear one. But for me, I'm like, waste my time. I want color. So I just picked up this one and I'm in love with it. It's so good. Now, if you're in the UK and you can get a hold of any of their eyeliners, those are awesome too. And I did just stock up on my Rimmel Stay Matte. I have a few of these on hand. Otherwise, I would have picked up the One Heck of a Blot. That is a really great powder to keep shine at bay without getting cakey. So I recommend that one as well. And I think that is all I have to say about that. I hope you guys enjoyed this rundown of things that I have tried and what I love and don't. Let me know if there are other things that you have tried from the range as well that you really love that you think I should go back and pick up and try out. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Have a good one and I will see you guys tomorrow. Mwah.